when you're fishing, it's you in the water and the fish. Out here, all that surrounds you flows straight to the soul. For all intents and purposes, it takes you away from anything that's on your mind, really. It is something Mark Shaw learned as a child, something he decided three years ago to share with others in a program called Real Recovery. We fly fish together for two days, and his name was Gary. As a buddy, Mark taught Gary how to fish. It's a complete distraction. And along the way, Gary taught Mark about life. Gary had cancer. A journey that is so consuming, but here on the river, it was different. You could see that he was escaping from his disease for at least two days. Two days that in time, Mark Shaw would come to understand. April 9th of this year, I had a grand mal seizure. And later that day, I found out that I had a brain tumor. You can't begin to know, you can't begin to understand these moments unless you've been there. Life is consumed by what it takes to save it. All the things he saw in Gary, he now understood. I never thought I'd be on the other end of it. All right, do we have all 12? 12 men, all with one thing in common. So Friday, I start a year's worth of chemo. Something Kyle Adderman, a fishing buddy this year, understands. I was uh, last year in Basalt, Colorado, as a um, participant. I was diagnosed with uh, leukemia in no uh, November 2009. Yeah, you went one way, I went the other. And that is one of the things real recovery brings an understanding that you're not alone. It puts you in a position where you know that other people are fighting the same battle you are. And out here on the river, those battles seem so far away. Colors are incredible, aren't they? And I don't have to think about cancer. I don't have to think about when's the next shoe gonna drop? When are my next treatment's gonna go? A participant will come off the water and he'll say to you, I haven't thought about my cancer once in the last three hours. It's not what you would expect. Ooh, kind of like that. <laughs> and that is what real recovery is about. Living for the moment, focusing on the here and now, and understanding tomorrow offers no guarantees. And then I learned um, in July of this year, Gary passed away. Perhaps more than most, these men understand how fragile life is. They know it is as unpredictable as a river. Through real recovery, they learn that with life, as with the world, you need to cherish every last drop. It is about living. Along the Colorado River. Life is good, live it. This is Dave Delosier. I don't know, for some reason I loved that truck and Bruce ended up remembering that. It was a gift an anniversary gift. So my dad had a 59 Chevy pickup. Bruce Hayes knew how much this truck meant to his wife and he knew how much she meant to him. So he searched and searched until he found it. I walked outside and he's like, look what I found. The perfect gift, but it was in anything but perfect shape. And it was all in pieces, literally in pieces. But that was okay. They had built a life and a family together. They would do the same with this. He wanted to do it together. He goes, I, I was thinking we could do it together. His love guided Bruce Hayes' life for his family and something else. Bruce Hayes was a, was, was a soldier. A captain in the Wyoming Army National Guard. He was being deployed to Afghanistan. Finishing that old truck would have to wait. What I remember most is we all got our assignments. An assignment that would take Bruce Hayes up a road to a remote village near the Pakistan border. In his path, a roadside bomb. And on 17 September, around 5.30 in the morning, he was killed. And uh, that's when the chaplain came to the door. Gone, the soldier, the husband, the father. But he had left one final gift. Remember that old pickup truck? Well, before leaving, he had paid a local mechanic $17,000 to fix it up. It was to be a surprise. And after he was killed, the guy took the money and ran. Um, it was very difficult. The money was gone, but not the memory of the man. Part of Bruce is just this, in this truck. He always saw things to the finish. And now the best way to honor a soldier, a friend, was to finish it. 
Well, they stripped away the rust word about this project spread. This thing took a new life. From literally all across this country. Here's a guy out of Massachusetts. Came the pieces that would finish what Captain Hayes never got the chance to. I mean, so when you get that kind of feedback across the country, this is going to be a community truck. An engine from Longmont, parts from literally everywhere, all put together at Stevenson Automotive in Denver, while students at Wyotech, a technical school in Laramie, work to make an old truck look anything but. What a story this truck is going to have. And that's the point to all this, to help two little girls remember their dad. She asks me all the time to tell their stories about daddy. So I'll be able to um, tell her stories about daddy as we're driving down the truck. And so it is that 10 months after this all started, this project has touched many lives. They all came together with a family for this one moment. Oh my gosh. The job done, just the way Captain Hayes would have wanted. A 59 Chevy Apache pickup that will forever remind a family of a husband and a father's love. In the end, Captain Hayes' one last gift for his family was delivered by the community, the same community Captain Hayes died for, defending. Thank you and God bless all of you. You've done such a beautiful job, and Bruce would be so honored. In Laramie. It's Bruce's last wish. This is Dave Delosier.